All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you how you can make a seemingly impossible integral possible just by interchanging the order of integration. So consider the following double integral. Integral from x to 1 of sine y squared dy and an integral from 0 to 1 of the same thing dx. At first sight, this integral is impossible to evaluate because there is no closed form for an antiderivative of sine of y squared. That said, let's see how, how the integral changes if we change dy and dx. And because the, or the bounds of integration depend on variables like x and y, uh, we have to be a bit more careful. You can't just put integral from x to 1 here because the outside integral only has to have constants. So the trick is, as I said, change x and y. And first, let's see what region is represented by this integral. So what do we have? On the one hand, we know that y is between x and 1, and x is between 0 and 1. And now let us draw this in a 2D plane. So this is x and y, and we know that x is between 0 and 1. And moreover, what this says is that y is squeezed between a bigger function and a smaller function. So here the bigger function is 1, and the smaller function is x. So y is sort of trapped between those two things, and therefore, because x is between 0 and 1, it has to be this region. So our region of integration is this. And now, all that we want to do is have some fun, all right? <laughs> no, seriously, all we want to do is interchange the order of integration. We want to change x and y. So instead of having this as a vertical region like this, where y is with respect to x, we want to write x with respect to y. So we want to change this into a horizontal region. And for this, what we have to do is we have to write x is between two things and y is between two things. Where the important thing is for the outer integral, for this y here, we need to have constants. And for x, the things can only depend on y. And so now look from this picture, what did we have? That was y equals to x, and that is y equals to 1. Let's first figure out the constants, where y is trapped between it. And so in this case, you see that y is still between 0 and 1. And for the x, before we had something is between bigger and smaller, for horizontal things, we have that x is between the rightmost function and the leftmost function. And so now looking at this picture, well, the leftmost function is just a zero function, so this straight line. And well, for the rightmost function here, if you want this is right and this is left, For the rightmost function here, we want to say x, but it would be silly to say x is less than or equal to x. What's important is that this thing depends on y. So instead of writing y equals to x, you just solve for x in terms of y, which is pretty trivial here. So what we really have is that x is between 0 and y, which now tells us how to change the order of integration because if you want to write this integral in terms of sine y squared 
dx dy. What this tells us is that x is between 0 and y, and then y, what this tells us is that it's between 0 and 1. Write this down, I'm going <laughs> to, if you're writing, you know, uh, I want to erase this whiteboard. And here's the cool thing. We had this integral, sine of y squared, which was impossible to integrate, but now we can actually integrate it because this is easy to integrate with respect to x because this just becomes a constant. And therefore, with respect to x, the antiderivative of sine y squared is just sine y squared x. And that's from x equals to 0 to x equals to y. I forgot to say that's like step 2. dy. And so, so all we have to do is replace x with y here. So this becomes integral from 0 to 1 of sine y squared y. And for the other term, it becomes sine y squared 0, which is just 0, dy. And this, even a single variable calculus student can integrate, because if you want, you use a substitution, so u equals to y squared, and in the end, this becomes, I believe, minus, let me double check though, so minus one half cosine of y squared from zero to one. Because, you know, uh, antiderivative of sine is minus cosine, but if you differentiate y squared, you have a two y, and to get rid of, you know, that two, you just divide by two here, and then in the end, you do get minus one-half cosine of one plus one-half cosine of zero, which just becomes minus one-half cosine of one plus one-half. So you see, just by interchanging the order of integration, you were able to evaluate an impossible integral. And this is very cool, and also I believe this shows how multivariable calculus is so much stronger than single variable calculus. Because in single variable calculus, when you had a function that you couldn't anti-differentiate, you were just stuck and you were just crying all night. Hopefully not, but here, if like one direction doesn't work, the nice thing in multivariable, you have many other directions to consider. I guess in this case two, but for general integrals you have more, but, and therefore we're able to make the impossible possible. All right, so if you like this math quickie, make sure, you know, I wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.